the narthex. All right, any other announcements for the uplifting of our community? Well, today uh, Jesus shares a parable of a fig tree that just won't grow, and we'll explore the ways that God tends to and cares for each of us. I invite you to take a moment to quiet your hearts and minds as we meditate on the music of the prelude. you to stand as you're able and turn toward the font for a time of confession and forgiveness. In the name of God, who makes a way in the wilderness, walks with us, and guides us in our pilgrimage. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Holy One, we confess that we have wandered far from you. We have not trusted your promises. We have ignored your prophets in our own day. We have squandered our inheritance of grace. We have failed to recognize you in our midst. Have mercy on us. Forgive us and turn us again to you. Teach us to follow in your ways. Assure us again of your love and help us to love our neighbor. Beloved in Christ, the word draws near to you, and all who call out to God shall be saved. In Jesus, God comes to you again and again and gathers you under wings of love. In Jesus' name, your sins are forgiven. God journeys with you and teaches you how to live in love. Amen. Thanks be to God.
Son of God, should be mortal for the mortal soul. But sin no angel to our rings of fire. But more the robe of human in Christ alone to this world. For us baptized, for us evil, his holy fast and for us temptation sharp he for us the tempter for us he prayed for us he taught for us his daily works he Thy words and signs and actions is still seeking of himself. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Let us pray. Eternal God, your kingdom has broken into our troubled world through the life, death, and resurrection of your Son. Help us to hear your word and obey it, and bring your saving love to fruition in our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. It's time now for the children's message. If all the children will come on down. Yeah, I love it. You're good at playing games. <laughs> All right, well, we got a disco ball today. Very exciting. Love it. Do you guys like disco balls? Yeah? Do you know what a disco ball is? Do you know what disco is? <laughs> <laughs> disco is not dead. Like Jesus. So, uh, yeah, a disco ball. That's very fun. So disco balls are like little, what, like little mirrors, yeah? 
Yeah, and they shine light in all kind of different directions. Yeah. Uh, well, you know what? Uh, it we're we're not in the season of Epiphany anymore, which is all about lights and stuff. But we have a really similar gospel lesson to to the whole theme of Epiphany that we are to shine God's light to the world, kind of like a disco ball shines like the sunlight there. See how it's going all over the place there and shining and being bright, shiny like that. Well, Jesus shares a, a parable, a, a little story about. Uh, a fig tree, uh, it's a fruit tree that won't produce fruit. Kind of like, uh, you guys see my stole here? Is there anything on that tree? No? Anything on that tree? No, nothing at all. What about the trees outside? Did y'all notice anything about the trees outside today on your way in? Yeah, what about them? Leaves, we got leaves coming out, we got flowers coming out, all sorts of stuff like that. Well, you know what? Just kind of like the light bouncing off of this and just like the trees outside that we see, uh, God wants us to produce things uh, for the world. And that thing that God wants us to produce is just like that sunlight that's shining in on this here and shines on each and every one of us. It's the light of Christ that we are called to shine out to the whole world. Just like a fruit tree producing fruit to nourish uh, people like us or the birds or the, or the deer, uh, God wants us to, to put out love and kindness to the whole world, shining, uh, and we're all a little different, kind of like a disco ball, shining like a disco ball for the love of God, uh, which is kind of a challenge sometimes because sometimes it gets kind of dark. Yeah, it's not always bright like this, is it? Yeah? No. But we, uh, we always have the light of Christ shining on us and shining in each of our hearts. Can we have a word of prayer together? Yeah? Also, shining like those shoes. Those are fun. All right, let's pray. <laughs> hey, God. Hey, God. Thank you for shining your light on us. Thank, Thank you for shining your light on us. Help us to shine your love and kindness. Help us to shine your love and kindness. And to be your light in the world. To be your light in the world. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thanks, y'all. See, it's not so bad. It's not so bad. Dad can come down anytime, though. It's great. <laughs> we continue now with the sharing of the scriptures. Our first reading is from Isaiah 55. To those who have experienced strong years in exile, the return to their homeland is a celebration of abundant life. God calls them into an everlasting covenant of love. Those who return to God will enjoy new life and forgiveness, because God's ways are not our ways. Reading from Isaiah. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food, incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you. Because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord that he may have mercy on them. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Word of God, word of life. upon you in your holy place 
that I might behold your power and your glory. For your steadfast love is better than my soul. My lips shall give you praise. So will I bless you as long as I live and lift up my hands in your name. My spirit is content as with the riches of God, and my mouth praises you with joyful lips. When I remember you upon my bed, and meditate on you in the night watches, for you have been my home. Shadow of your wings, I will rejoice. My whole being clings to you, your right hand holds me fast. Second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Paul uses images from Hebrew scriptures in prophecy to speak the truth of Jesus Christ. He is our rock, our water, our food, and our drink. Christ is a living sign of God's faithfulness. A reading from 1 Corinthians. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea, and all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and all ate the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them. The rock was Christ. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them, and they were struck down in the wilderness. Now these things occurred as examples for us, so that we might not desire evil as they did. Do not become idolaters as some of them did. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink, and they rose up to play. We must not indulge in sexual immorality as some of them did. 23,000 fell in a single day. We must not put Christ to the test, as some of them did, and were, all, and were destroyed by serpents. And do not complain, as some of them did, and were destroyed by the destroyer. These things happened to them to serve as an example, and they were written down to instruct us, on whom the end of the ages have come. So if you think you are standing, watch out that you do not fall. No testing has overtaken you that is not common to everyone. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tested beyond your strength. But with the testing, he will also provide the way out so that you may be able to endure it. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. At that very time, there were some present who told him about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. Jesus asked them, Do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, that they were worse sinners than all other Galileans? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish just as they did. Then he told them this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, See here, for three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree, and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should I be wasting the soil? He replied, Sir, let it alone for one more year, 
until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you in Christ Jesus, who cultivates faith. Amen. Amen. So this week, uh, a few of us gathered for breakfast and fellowship, uh, and we, we got to talking about the trees and shrubs that we hope to plant at the end of the month uh, around our, our beautiful church property. And the supplier we found this year offered a number of fruit-producing trees, so we thought, hey, let's give it a shot. <laughs> Knowing laughs, I like that. <laughs> I've always wanted fruit trees. Uh, as a kid, uh, I loved going on field trips to the local orchard or, or stopping by the apple barn uh, for a bushel of apples on trips to Gatlinburg. Yeah, anybody done that? Just me? All right, cool. There's nothing quite like seeing a fi uh, fields of trees covered in delicious fruit. I've always been enamored by the idea of growing something delicious on a tree own. So when I was uh, a young child, I would save the pits from peaches with the hopes of seeding and planting a whole peach tree. I would, I would even go out and bury a few of them from time to time. But without the proper research and planning, those minimal efforts proved fruitless, so to speak. <laughs> there it is. Cut it down. It's not producing fruit yet. Cut it down. While perhaps not so harsh, I have been in the same boat as this landowner in today's gospel lesson, encouraging that interest in fruit-producing trees. One year, my dad and I planted a few peach and apple trees in our backyard. So we planted them, even though they were already pretty sizable trees at that point, my dad reminded me that it would take a few years before the trees would be big enough and healthy enough to produce anything that we could actually eat. Think back with me, years is forever when you're a kid, right? But I thought it'll be worth it in the end. Well, those few years passed. The trees never grew. The soil was too rocky. They got too little sun, and so we cut them down. Giving up on something that you've, you've sunk years into has to be one of the hardest things. And it's even more difficult when you've actually put in the work you believe is necessary for healthy growth. But sometimes the conditions just aren't right. Is it even worth trying? Cultivating fruit trees seems to take an awful lot of time and attention. And even when you get the fruit to grow, your apples never look quite like those beautiful polished apples you get at the store. Because growing fruit trees requires commitment. You got to know every little detail about how the plant will react in the environment it's planted in. You got to know the dangers that the plant might face throughout the year. You got to know what kinds of treatments to give the plant if there's too much sun or rain or cold. There's so many details that go into cultivating any plants, but fruit plants in particular, right? What are the best methods for pruning? Will this climate even support growth? You got to avoid planting in heavily and poorly drained sites. You got to make sure there's good air circulation. You have to plant in full sun and away from the shade of larger trees and buildings. You got to know if you need to add fertilizer. And if so, it's time to add the fertilizer. You got to know what kind of pests are drawn to the plant and how we should deal with them. My men's group, please don't let me talk you out of fruit trees. How do we even have fruit trees. Well, in today's gospel lesson, Jesus uses the image of one particularly challenging fig tree in response to folks asking about the major tragedies that have occurred around them. It wouldn't be too far a stretch to imagine Jesus being asked about ICUs full of COVID patients or that maternity hospital that was bombed in Ukraine last week. We try to make sense of these things. We try to figure out where God is in all of this, just as Jesus' audience was grappling with the tragic events of their time. 
And Jesus' response is this kind of bizarre story about a gardener and a landowner and this fig tree that just won't grow. As we see throughout the scriptures, it's common to believe that affliction and suffering is punishment from God. They sinned or someone in their family sinned, and that's why all this bad stuff keeps happening to them, right? We can get behind that. We aren't so different. How easy is it for us to fall into the trap of, of victim blaming? We have to justify in our minds why bad things might happen to good people, and the easiest route is to find out that hey, they weren't actually good people after all. Here, Jesus uses the image of a fig tree to shift the focus. He's shifting it from from their sin, their offenses, to your sin, your offenses. It's a challenge to make the shift in our focus. We ask, why do bad things happen to good people and good things happen to bad people when it's perhaps more fruitful to consider what is the fruit that I am producing? Or how will I grow into God's call in my life even in the midst of tragedy? To borrow from the imagery Jesus uses, how is the manure helping me grow today? It's not a simple answer. There rarely is a simple answer when faced with the nuance of tragic events and immense suffering. There's no quick fix here. Instead, Jesus gives us the model of the gardener. Gardening, it takes time and attention and commitment. And Jesus calls us to apply those same principles to our lives of faith. What needs special tending in your heart today? What will cultivate the soil of daily life so that new growth, new possibilities might emerge? What can we learn from this gardener about allowing for a different outcome, a new possibility? Friends, we we do hear some good news in this, I promise. And that good news is that we, like the fig tree, are tended by the great gardener of our lives, who is Christ Jesus. A gardener open to a future possibility that that he doesn't control or manage. A gardener open to yet another fruitless year, though working tirelessly to give us constant care, digging around the roots and applying manure to help us grow. An infinitely patient gardener that acts in a way that doesn't make sense to the rest of the world. If it's not working, cut it out. If it's not producing, cut it down. But the God who shows extravagance in love and grace over and over again tends to us, encourages us, cultivating our faith that that we might try again. One more year. Give it one more year. Luther begins the famous 95 Theses with the bold claim that when Jesus said, repent, repent, He meant that believers should live a whole life of repenting. Our old friend, Brother Delmer Chilton, puts it like this. Luther said that the life of the Christian is a life of daily repentance, a life of constant turning from the world to God and then turning back again from God to go into the world. The result of this turning is the fruit we bear the acts of love and kindness to others that our lives produce. So how is God nurturing you to produce fruit? How's God being patient with you? What in your life needs tending? As we continue in this season of reflection and preparation, this season of of repentance, of turning to God and back out to the world, may we open ourselves to the nurturing care and tending love of Jesus. May we be open to the ways that Christ is pruning us, clearing our roots, and yes, sometimes even fertilizing us so that we may produce the good fruit of God's kingdom.
Amen. church in professing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, God, the Father Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. earth. I I believe believe in Jesus Jesus Christ, Christ, God's God's only Son, Son, our Lord, who was conceived conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit, born born of the Virgin Virgin Mary, Mary, suffered suffered under under Pontius Pontius Pilate, Pilate, was was crucified, crucified, died, and was was buried. buried. He He descended descended to the dead. dead. On the third day, day, he he rose again. again. He He ascended ascended into heaven. He is seated seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please kneel or be seated as you desire for our prayers. Drawn close to the heart of God, we offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. We pray for the church around the world in all its forms, for pastors, deacons, bishops, chaplains, and mission developers, for church councils, for committee chairs, and all lay ministry leaders, for congregations that contemplate difficult decisions about the future of their ministry. Merciful God, receive receive our prayer. prayer. For the health of this planet and the well-being of its creatures, for lands impacted by droughts and at risk of wildfires, for fig trees and vineyards that produce fruit for our nourishment and delight, for animal habitats threatened by climate change. Merciful God, receive receive our our prayer. prayer. For those called into positions of civic responsibility, 
for judges, attorneys, and court administrators tasked with uncovering truth and delivering justice, for activists and community leaders who cast a vision of a more compassionate and equitable society. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. For those who call upon you for mercy, for all who live in poverty and experience hunger, for any who feel tested beyond their strength, for those who are hospitalized or near death, and for all in need of healing, especially those we know by name, the Carroll family, family, the Swigert family, family, Gladys, Andrew, Andrew Lindsay, Lindsay, Kathleen, Kathleen Jim, Jim, and Wes. And Merciful God, receive our prayer. For the advocacy efforts of this congregation, for those whose faith leads them to speak in difficult truths, and engage in difficult conversations with policymakers, for those who promote mercy over vengeance or retaliation. Merciful God. Lord, we lift up the people of the Ukraine today, and we also pray for Cheryl. Merciful God. For those whose earthly journeys have ended, we give thanks. For all the saints, we praise you for the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Merciful God. Accept the prayers we bring, O God, on behalf of a world in need, for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I invite you to stand as you're able. <coughs> The peace of Christ be with you always. And also, we share now a sign of that peace. Blessed spring, where word and sight embrace us into Christ the vine. Here Christ enjoins each one to be a branch of this Christ's holy vine, Christ's living tree, be praised for this blessed mystery. That word and water thus revive, and join us to your tree. We stand. Okay. (laughs) 
many hands. <laughs> Let us pray. Extravagant God, you have blessed us with the fullness of creation. Now we gather at your feast where you offer us the food that satisfies. Take and use what we offer here. Come among us and feed us with the body and blood of Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to God. It is right and a good and joyful thing to give our thanks to you, Holy One on high, for you shaped all living beings and every wonder of creation to bear fruit that glorifies you. In the soil of covenant, you planted a life with your chosen people and nourished a family to bless all the earth. When through human faithlessness, that life was grieved and barren, you sent your son to be the soil of our redemption. Through his resurrection, you brought us out of the deadness of sin into the fullness of your fruit-bearing, fruit-sharing life. And so we rejoice with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven as we join the unending hymn. summons everyone who thirsts to, to come and drink. Make all who drink from this cup thirst for the wine of your kingdom. As we remember through this fruit of the vine, your son's saving passion, send your Holy Spirit to lead us into life. By your same spirit, bless this bread and cup that they may be for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The night he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. And after he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. God of all flourishing, through the fast of Lent, nourish in your church a life that is wholly fruitful. Give patience to all who abide through long seasons of barrenness and long for new life. Tend and care for any who hunger for mercy and thirst for forgiveness. Bless your children when they seek restored relationships in church and community in a spirit of humble confession. Shape your people to hunger and thirst for the day when there is one shared flourishing for all, one feasting with you and glory, when with the saints, apostles, and martyrs, your creation shall be at last wholly fruitful in you, one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Gathered in one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Here is food and drink for the journey. Take and be filled. Amen. Thanks be to God. If you haven't already, I invite you to take out your communion elements, beginning with the bread. Together, we share the bread, the body of Christ given for you. Together, we share the cup, the blood of Christ shed for you. Oh, 
Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed Jesus, in this rich meal of grace, you have fed us with your body, the bread of life. Now send us forth to bear your life hope in a world in need. Amen. Amen. Receive this blessing. You are children of God, anointed with the oil of gladness and strengthened for the journey. Almighty God, motherly, majestic, and mighty, bless you this day and always. Amen. Amen. Restore in us, O God, the splendor of your love. Renew your image in our hearts, and all our sins remove. O Spirit, waken us, the wonder of your power, from fruitless unfurl our lives like springtime bud and flower. Bring us, O oh Christ, to share the fullness of your joy. Baptize us in the risen life that death cannot destroy. Three person God fulfill the promise of your grace that we win all our searching ends may see you face to Go in peace. Jesus meets you on the way.